Charleston man was diagnosed with a life-changing lung condition. He dropped everything to make an impact thousands of miles away. Lillian Donahue has more on how a new nonprofit is looking to help children in Central America. Not often do you come across terminally ill individuals willing to spend the rest of their days to benefit fellow humans. So when Jim Ryan from South Carolina with a terminal lung condition and his dedicated friend Kiploma reached out to me about their move to Belize to establish a school feeding program, I was sold. In this video, I meet up with them in Santa Elena in Belize to learn how they came about this audacious decision and to share their inspirational story. It is my hope that this video touches the heart of others to support their amazing cause. This is their story. My name is James Ryan. I'm part of the Belize Experiment. Um, my background is I, I was in the service industry. Um, and all of a sudden, I, I came up with a pulmonary fibrosis in the lungs. And um, back, oh, this was in, in uh, January. So uh, the Lord spoke to me, and I wanted to do something in my life to give back to the community. And we are relocating to Belize here. And uh, this is the school that we will be working with. And uh, it's just been a blessing ever since. Everything has just, just been working out good. My name is Kip Plummer. Um, I've been in the service industry my entire adult life. Um, my, uh, my last career job was uh, that, I, that I just left in February uh, to start the Belize Experiment was, um, was a, a, a board of director job. Uh, my area was from Maryland down to South Carolina. And in February, we, we started the Belize Experiment. So. Pulmonary fibrosis, what is it and how severe can it be? Scarring occurs diffusely throughout the lungs. It impacts the lungs' ability to expand fully and it significantly impacts the patient's ability to breathe well and do activity. Pulmonary fibrosis, if anybody reads that on the, the, the definition, typically you only have about two to five years of life left. Since then I've had wonderful doctors, uh, Robert Hospital, and they're talking about transplant down the road um, and things like that, but this man here is what kept me in January from I, I was looking at the ceiling, I thought my life was finished and you know, he would not let me quit. He got me up and my doctor said, you gotta exercise. And if you can't breathe, you don't wanna exercise. And he made me get outside and walk. And so I'm very blessed to have a friend like this. Why a school feeding program of all worthy courses? About 12 years ago, I relocated to Belize. I had a small business in the city and then I, I moved out to Santa Elena and got out of that business there. I um, got remarried to a beautiful lady and um, how this all a seed was planted back then was my son was going to the school there and I've started to realize that everyone looks the same when they're in uniforms but that wasn't the case so the, the feeding program started back then. One child turned into three, three turned into seven and I knew back then that the teacher at that school uh, came to me and she said what are you are you the one feeding the children and i said yes and she goes i don't know what you're doing but keep doing what you're doing because they're not falling asleep in class anymore and they're learning and their grades have already come up in like a three-week time frame so that's when it, the seed planted and then i went back to the states it came back to me with my diagnosis um, pulmonary fibrosis well i'd, I'd done well for myself in, 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 in the industry and um, in sales but there was something i was missing and I knew that this is something I wanted to do is uh, leave footprints you know, if, that, if this is to happen now. Six years ago, um, I actually hired Jim to come back to America to work for me. And uh, he was a sales uh, professional for, for the last six years um, and he did a great job. Um, he moved back to America from Belize and um, when he first came to Belize, he had uh, uh, mentioned to me about feeding children and, and how much that touched him in Belize and, um, and how much the, the children need in Belize. They need the assistance. And so, um, and that was six years ago. Um, fast forward to uh, today and um, uh, that's in, in January, Jim um, was diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis. And um, 
and so that'll that'll make somebody think about you know your your I guess your future yes and and knowing that Jim wanted to always come back to Belize to feed children he asked me um, if I would help him do that and in February we decided to start the Belize Experiment Foundation Jim and I not only did he, he work for the company we became very close friends and, and when he he did come down with the uh, diagnosis and um, uh, and when he asked me about coming to Belize to start the foundation I had to really think about it because I'd again I'd been with the same organization for 16 years I had a lot going for me with the organization but I wanted to do more with my life as well and uh, given the fact that Jim had the, the pulmonary fibrosis and he wanted to feed the children it touched me enough to where I said you know what you've got my full support let's go make it happen so um, yeah. According to UNICEF, 49% of all Belizean children live in multidimensional poverty. 30% of homes are skipping meals to survive, and 19% of children suffer from stunted growth due to malnutrition. These figures makes it a laudable idea to start a school feeding program in Belize. But what does the Belize Experiment Foundation seek to achieve? So in February, we decided to start the Belize Experiment. In March, um, we brought in another board member. His name is Tim T. And Tim helped us, helped us to realize that just feeding children was not the way to go. We needed to make sure that the Lord was the focus. And if we put the Lord in focus, that the foundation would thrive and we could get this thing going. And we were having actually a, a lot of problems in the very beginning. And until Tim helped us to understand what was the most important thing, and that's Jesus Christ, then things started to work in our favor for the foundation. Then we met Pastor Cow, and, and this is exactly where we're gonna start the program, St. Elena Baptist Primary School. And um, so after we met Pastor Cow, uh, we, we started to really you know, dive into, okay, how are we going to make this happen? We will be building a cafeteria directly behind me as well. Um, but, in, but before the cafeteria is built, we're going to be feeding um, 100 children in the morning and 100 children at lunch um, here on campus. And um, we'll possibly be, under this are tents. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there'll be tents, or, or and, and partly under this cover here as well. But um, we'll also be monitoring school grades. Pastor Kawa also runs the school here at the uh, Santa Elena Baptist Primary School. We will have the kids' grades when we start. We believe that nutrition affects the learning. So not only will they learn more with proper nutrition, they'll be able to receive the Word of God as well. Um, so it works hand in hand, but, but we will be monitoring their school grades and, and, and each quarter, we will be able to give those KPIs, I say, you know, you know where, where, what, what grades did they start at versus where they were three months from now, six months, six months from now, a year from now, three years from now, and we will have those um, those reports and documented within the foundation. In the beginning, when I got diagnosed, uh, when I asked for his help, I was just looking, man, maybe the, a few bowls of cereal. Well, this is not a few bowls of cereal kind of guy. When he's going to do it, if he goes full, he's we're full. And with with uh, Tim Teague, the other board member, and Kip Plummer, this thing has grown. And we've already had people calling from other schools in Belize already. They've heard about the program. We have a uh, website and everything developed so people can see what we're going to do. The nutrition levels are going to be far above than anything, even higher than some of the U.S. standards. So we're going to give them nutritious meals. And we've already been requ requested to go to another, the next school. Uh, there's qualifications for the students and things like that. But this is... This is uh, a program that we want to do this. If it, it takes us around the country and we develop better schools, we're going to develop better children and the, the country of Belize is going to re, re, reap the rewards from this. So. What does the local pastor think of this wonderful initiative? Well, you know, it, this is a very good program. Uh, feeding the children, making sure that they get a, a balanced diet. Uh, we know that it is um, it will help their overall performance, their health, productivity, and um, in fact, we know that a balanced diet does help uh, any person, especially a child, to focus. Uh, it helps in memory, concentration, 
and so um, this is a very beneficial uh, program for the school. Also, I could think about the timing of it. Uh, during this time, I believe, and in this area, uh, uh, where the financially COVID has put a dent in the pockets of the nation, but also families. So this, I consider this a, a perfect time also for this project. Very important, very essential and needed uh, for our children. Yeah, we have students come to school with a dollar or two and can't afford even a three dollar meal and have to resort to chips and the high sugar drinks, which is bad for the, for the student. Uh, it, that affects even their mood, their, their concentration. And so we see this all the time. And so I realize that this feeding project will benefit our students in a very great way. At a glance, there is no doubt that the Belize Experiment Foundation School Feeding Program is a worthy cause to support. How do viewers contribute to this wonderful initiative? Like I mentioned earlier, uh, we're going after the nutritional type of foods, your fruits and vegetables and, and proteins that, that children need to develop. With that comes a cost. Um, in order to, to make 200 meals and feed 100 children breakfast and lunch each day, um, that cost is $10,000 per month um, in, in order to achieve this. Um, we would ask that you would go to our website. Um, that's BelizeExperiment.com. Um, you can donate monthly. Um, you can do a one-time donation. You can, do, you can donate monthly as well. You can also donate, donate stock. Um, and we also have a building fund for the cafeteria that we're building. So there, there's, there's four different ways you can, you can help us. Uh, if you find it in your heart, uh, please do. So as Kip mentioned there, uh, BelizeExperiment.com. Please go on there and look through the website. Familiarize. We want you to be part of this family. This is something we don't want just a one-time donation. We, we want you to be a part of what's going on down here and adopt us as a uh, ministry. And let's, let's uh, we, if it's in your heart, definitely um, donate because we're, we're going to help a lot of children here. And the request is larger and larger um, every day, we're finding out. He's an athlete properly he performs for you it's no different than in a classroom if you give them more protein than they've ever had before you're going to get results and if you get results in the classroom those are your leaders in the future in Belize it is always amazing to see experts integrate into their host countries but to give something back is beyond admiration. If you are touched by Jim, Kip, and Tim's initiative, please support them by donating via their website, BelizeExperiment.com, and the good Lord will bless you. Thank you very much.